Brewmaster by Kelly Karam. Fade in. Full screen television. Football game. Two football commentators, Bald Stu, 62, and a Joe Buck lookalike sit behind a desk in an announcing booth overlooking the game. The scoreboard reads 46 to 0. I haven't seen such a porous home defense like this since girls powder puff football back in high school. Careful, Stu. Girls don't play powder puff football these days. Interior, brewery, night. A small urban warehouse. Cement walls covered in celebrity murals. Huge stainless steel brew making machinery glistens in the background. Bearded Douglas, 33, the bartender, stands cross armed, shaking his head disgustingly at the television. Sitting at the bar, Gina, 24, sun kissed and smooth legged, stares at the pony tailed stout woman, Sarah, 32, who kneels on the cracked cement floor, scraping off one of the many wads of colored gum stuck underneath the picnic tables. A loud man's laugh blasts louder than the football game. It's Justin, 30, Superman handsome and Prince Charming charming. He's schmoozing with an elderly woman named May. Gina smiles adoringly at Justin's adorableness. May you keep coming here? I'm going to have to leave my wife. <clears throat> Did you hear the one about the cop who pulled over the car that was weaving? No. Told the drunken driver his wife fell out of the car a few miles back. You know what that drunk said? No. Thank God, I thought I was going deaf. <laughs> Justin laughs. Sarah crawls out from under the table with a small pail filled with rock-hard gum. Sarah goes behind the bar and dumps them in a big garbage pail. She grins again at Justin, having fun with May. Not easy crawling on these floors. Sarah ignores Gina and washes dishes. I could use a maid. How's about I pay you twice what they pay you here and you come spit and shine my condo? Sarah's the owner. Justin told me he owned the place. Their husband and wife team. A long, deliberate stare between Sarah and Gina is palpable. Yeah, he's the schmoozer and she's the maid. Now that there's too fair. I'm the brewmaster. Sarah plods away with her bucket and scraper, still in earshot. More like the brew bitch. Nice. Sarah shoots Douglas a W2F look. Douglas's eyes dart back and forth comically. Not nice, lady. The phone in the bar rings. Hello. Hey, dollface. It's, um, not, not those bracking icky things, is it? Braxton Hicks, dude. Your mind thinks it's one thing, but in reality... Douglas scowls at Gina. She flips her chair and attention to Justin, now talking to two hot girls and four guys. Okay, but you call me back in five minutes if another contraption comes. He hangs up the phone. But in reality, your body is faking you out. Braxton Hicks, fake is love. Gina rummages through her purse. The phone rings. Hello. On my way. He bangs the phone down nervously. Hey, Sarah, gotta go. I'm busted. I mean... Pregnant waters. Go, Douglas. Call us with the news. Douglas grabs a jacket from underneath the bar and flies out the door. Gina downs the last of her beer, slams the mug down on the counter. Justin pockets his cell. Let's see. I can't seem to find your tab here. You look for that, Hilda. I'm slipping out for a smoke. As Gina slides out the door, we hear... We're closing in ten. Justin sees Gina exit. Sarah approaches Justin. You think Douglas is comping her? She said she's going out for a smoke. Stay here. I'll go see what's up. With a peck on Sarah's cheek, Justin exits. Sarah cleans and then cashes out the last of the patrons. Sarah follows the last guest out and witnesses exterior, brewery, parking lot, night. All but one blue Mustang with fogged up windows remains in the parking lot. The passenger door opens. Justin gets out of the car. He lets out a short quieter laugh and glances down at his open fly to zip up the zipper. Justin slams the blue Mustang's car door shut. Interior, brewery, night. Dragging a heavy bag of hops to a giant fermenter, tears fall down Sarah's cheeks. Justin flips the clothes sign. Interior, brewery, night. Sarah flips the open sign. A few customers sprinkle in as Sarah bartends. May comes from nowhere, cozies to the bar. No TV, no sexy dudes. This place is dead. Where's Jaybird? My husband, Justin, is at a beer summit. What can I get you? Nothing, darling. I hate drinking alone. May exits, bumping into Gina, who enters. Gina takes a seat at the bar. 
Her blouse is so low, it's a miracle you can't see nipples. So, where's your talking points? Drawing two beer mugs simultaneously on tap, Sarah ignores her. Gina applies lip gloss. Where's Dougie do? Douglas had a baby boy. Well, whoop do doo for Dougie do. Another damn contraption. His name is Douglas. Believe me, he's not Jesus. The beard's just man makeup for Dougie do. A clanking noise like rattling bones bangs within the walls of the fermenter. Sarah looks on with grave concern. I much prefer that to crowds cheering at Pat and Manny who grunt. What's that called? Football? No, that. Pointing to the intimidating steel contraption, Gina smirks. Sarah chuckles. Oh, that. That's a fermenter. A 15 barrel fermenter. How many gallons does it make? One barrel is 31 gallons. You do the math. Fair enough. 465. Now give me a 12 plate. Bewildered gaze comes over Sarah. Don't worry. I know what you're thinking. I forgot to set off yesterday. I assure you I won't take flight after this flight tonight. <laughs> Sarah taps out 12 different beers. She places them in a carrier in front of Gina. One at a time, Gina downs the beers. I'll call you an Uber. Fishing in her wallet, Gina outs two fifties and smacks them on the bar. No worries, brewmaster. I walk here. What? Where's your Mustang? Mustang? You're kidding, right? I own a Ford 150. Interior, brewery, night. Loud thumps come from the fermenter. Sarah bangs back on the steel with her fists like a kid having a temper tantrum. Don't you break on me. Not now. Crying, she slides down the apparatus and then sits with her head between her knees. Her muffin top belly bobs up and down between sobs. The fermenter hums in white noise. Sarah grunts loudly as she drags 44 pound bags of hops over to the machines. A man's husky grunt is heard in the background. Sarah's eyes bug out. She lets go of the heavy bag. Sarah turns slowly. Douglas, you scared me. Ooh. Not funny. How's your son in work? Girlfriend's too to handle has him in delight. That's disgusting, Douglas. Just the same, you're missed. Justin's still at the summit, and business is horrible. I can't do it all. I can't. Douglas smacks the bright tank hose to the fermenter. You'll think of something. Douglas turns on the television to some sporting event. Sarah flips the sign to open. With Douglas as the bartender, she crawls under her picnic table and scrapes off gum. Gina and the bearded guy, Timmy, 35, wearing a scarf and cutoffs, stroll up to the bar. What can I do for you, big guy? What's new on tap? What's new on tap, Sarah? Got a new IPA, unnamed. Jesus, Hilda, get off your knees and be the brewmaster God intended you to be. Turn off the TV and blow us some tunes, Dougie Doo. Dougie Doo, only for you. Sarah evil eyes Douglas. What I tell you? Douglas, did you get the barley like I asked? No problem, I'm in my car. Sarah peeps at the clock, pussyfoots to the back of the bar secretly listens to Douglas as he puts the moves on Timmy. After closing, I'm two blocks from here. New club on 7th is... I'm there. One thirty. Mysteriously, Sarah jumps up from behind Douglas. Ah! Guess one scare deserves another. Why don't you pull your car in the back? Then I'll close up. With the patrons gone, Sarah flips the sign to close. She scurries to the back door, opens it. There's the blue Mustang she saw Justin get out of. The trunk pops open. There is Douglas yanking out a 55-pound bag of barley. Douglas drops the bag with a thud at her feet. Thank you. You can leave now. I still need to clean up. On the clock, 15 more, boss. No, Douglas. I'm sure your girlfriend and baby misses you. See you tomorrow. By the way, nice car. He shuffles out the door. Sarah snags her purse and car keys. Exterior, club, parking lot, night. The lot is empty except for a few cars. Sarah spots the blue Mustang. Douglas is inside. She glimpses at the clock. It reads 1.20. She pulls up next to his car, beeps the horn lightly. Douglas turns his head towards her car. Sarah motions for him to come. He leaves his blue Mustang and gets into her car. Interior, Sarah's car, night. Sarah puts her hand over her eyes and in a trembling voice. Please, come back with me. The fermenter is making weird noises. Please, Douglas, I... I... What? How did you know I was here? I heard you. Now listen to me. 
The business shuts down if the fermenter blows. I'll bring you back. Before he can answer, she skids off. Shit, sir, I'm not a plumber. Probably needs cleaning. When's Justin's... He's not. I... I think he left me. And I have issues with small places. I, I, I'm i scared. Please, I, I'll give you 200. I'm sure the baby could Let's use... Let's just it. get this done. Interior brewery. In front of the fermenter. Night. Sarah cranks open the manhole. Douglas looks at her. Well, what the hell do I use to clean it once I'm in there? First check if there's any auto-identifiable pieces. What do you mean? Giant yeast deposits? I don't know. Douglas crawls into the small, light submarine hole. Interior, brewery, inside fermenter, night. It's dark. One stream of light. Douglas crawls around and finds a long, white bone. Tosses it out of the hole. Oh boy. Not fun. Clearly not humorous. Wait. I think I found the answer. Douglas picks up a strange, oval-shaped object. Ah! Oh, it's someone's head! The manhole shuts. It's black. Cranking sounds are heard. Douglas bangs at the door. Horrific screams commence as the fermenter gurgles and moans. Interior, brewery, night. A country band is playing a country song. Waitresses dressed like sexy cowgirls are taking orders from thirsty patrons. Gina in a sexy jean miniskirt is tending bar. Interior, brewery, bathroom, night. A woman whistles, master in the house. It's Sarah's reflection in the mirror. She's in full makeup, blood red lipstick, teased pigtails, breasts exploding inside a too tight blouse. Interior, brewery, night. Stop pretending to bartend, Gina. Then give me a new full body beer loaded with your yummiest of yummy, foamiest of foamy head. Sarah shakes the bottle of beer, hands it to Gina. She views the label. It reads, Brew bitch. They laugh wickedly. Gina smacks off the cap using the bar edge, licks the erupting foam. Sarah spits out her chewed gum and sticks it on a pole laden with hundreds of other gum wads. Fade out. The end.